Good morning. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to Hoskins, Papua New Guinea. We are heading out to Lele today. It's just a half an hour flight. Um, got a fuel drum, a bunch of propane, some roofing upper and some cement and stuff downstairs. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Right, igniter's on, fuel pump on, and low start. I'm just watching the NG right now, making sure it's coming up over 30%, over 35%. Look at the ITT. And it peaked out at 640. All right, once it's starting to go back down, we're going to go igniters off, fuel pump off, generator on. Wait a second. Prop forward, V2 on. Now my amps are coming back down. We'll throw our alternator on and our aux bus. All right, we're heading out at 7,000 feet today. It's not very long of a flight, so there's really no need to go any higher than that. But here we are in West New Britain today. We're heading out to East New Britain. Uh, let's zoom in real quick. So we're gonna be heading out here, about in there somewhere. There's a volcano right here and a big old volcano right there and another one over here, another here, 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 here. Yeah, there's lots of volcanoes here. Uh, nothing out there today as far as ash goes, so that is good. All right, for our weight today, I've already got this plugged in. I've got all my seats off. I'm 85 with my bag. I've got a, a raft on back and some other things as well. 545 is what we've got for kgs. We've got 930 pounds of fuel. And yes, this converts everything back and forth. So we're gonna put in 1,043 to our cargo. It says 6620 and this says 6634. So I'm just go one more so that it matches up there that we're within 10. All stations, Hoskins, 127 decimal one, Kodiak, November Tango, Echo, taxiing runway one, two for departure, zero, seven, zero, be on climb, 7,000, all stations, Hoskins. All right, get our taxi light on. Morsby 6622, November Tango, Echo, taxi. I just heard him. November Tango, Echo, go ahead. November Tango Echo Taxi, Hoskins, Lele, 1 POB. November Tango Echo. Caps and selectors are good. Our controls are good. We'll leave our TAWs enabled for now. Our switches and instruments, 6,600 pounds. So rotate at 60 and come back in at 71 if we had to in case of an emergency. Our T's and P's, our temperatures and pressures are all in the green. We're at 20 degrees. Communicated in, verified as well. I'm at abort. Uh, we'll be 50 knots by the 1,000 foot marker. Otherwise, we'll full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, cut off, pull off, and shut up if we are going off. After takeoff, we're going to pitch for 85, consider EPL, consider feather. There's a field off to the left. Um, if it's right after, then I'm just gonna leave it full forward and not feather. I'll pull off, shut off, 80 full flaps, emergencies and masters and crack my door. Right, igniter's on strobe, landing. We're on both sides, 40 done our taxi call. 32 degrees, we're sea level this morning. So 1540 for 1590. All right, so high idle, mission condition flaps, 20 fuel and harnesses. 1540, rotate 60. Checklist is complete. All right, torque is set, airspeed's alive. There's 40, there's 50 knots continuing. And there's rotate. my torque or my ITT down just a tiny bit. It's at the 750, so it's just in the yellow a little bit. And we're just gonna pitch at our seven and a half degrees on the attitude indicator. That's gonna give us 85 knots, which is a nice ankle. 
All stations Hoskins and November Tango Hotel. November Tango Echo departed runway 12, passing 500, will be on climb 7000 for a layaway. And all stations Hoskins and helicopter Tango Hotel, hotel is uh, 8 miles uh, to the east, uh, below 2000. November Tango Echo. All right, that's our company helicopter. He's just over here on the other side of this mountain or this volcano over here. Uh, so I haven't really shared why I climb out at 85 knots. But the reason I don't just do a VX climb on every one of my departures at 73 knots is because if I did have an engine failure, there's not enough speed, especially if you're at below 1,000 feet. There's not enough speed for you to pitch over get your airspeed up high enough to where you wouldn't just completely just fall and smack the ground. I know it's hard to believe, but it's very true. <laughs> um, that's why pitching for 85, because I should already be at 85 with 20 degrees of flap, is gonna be my best glide. Um, with that flap configuration, which is what we take off with, take off with 20 degrees of flaps. So that's the reason why I always pitch out at 85. The only time I'd really use 73 is maybe at a bush location and I want to get up and out of a valley really, really quick. Or if there are clouds right at the end of the runway or something like that, I don't use 73 very often unless it's actually necessary. All right, we're zero degrees of flaps. Bring our prop back to 2000 RPM. And from this point, let's just go ahead and throw our autopilot on real quick. We're just going to follow the coast today because I really don't want to feel like wearing a life vest right now. I could cut the corner and just go straight across the ocean. Um, and it might save like one minute maybe, but uh, it's not worth wearing a life vest this morning. It's too warm out. I think it's, it's 95 degrees in here right now, so and it's 9 in the morning. Morsby 6622, November Tango Echo departure. Good morning, November Tango Echo departed Hoskins for Lele, time 1-0. Tracking 0-6-9er on climb 7,000. Estimating Lele, time 3-6. November Tango Echo, confirming estimate Lele, 3-6. Affirmative, 3-6, November Tango Echo. All right, we can go ahead and flip off our landing light, our bypass, our engine inlet back to normal, and our igniters can be turned off now. For our best climb performance, we're just gonna bump our ITT right up to 720, and we'll leave it at 720 with our prop at 2000. That's gonna be our best climb, at least set up engine-wise, and then if we want our best rate of climb, or VY, then what we'll do is we'll just pitch up and climb at 100 knots. So 100 knots is our minimum speed that we can do it with our autopilot. And actually best rate actually is 99 knots anyways. So, and then it adjusts the higher you go, but basically 99 knots. So for our autopilot usage, we're just gonna climb out at 100 knots or thereabouts and follow the coastline right here. Just so the people within gliding distance, I do have a wrap and I do have a vest, but I just don't really feel like wearing it today. Well, a lot of you guys have wondered what I carry in my airplane all the time because I'm always empty when I make my videos. But uh, yeah, I've got a fuel drum, I've got a bunch of propane bottles, I've got some uh, roofing, or actually that's more like siding, I think. Then underneath I have um, three or four bags of cement and a few other personal things. So yeah, anyways, this is pretty typical load. Um, it's really not that heavy. We've only got 500, like 45 kgs on board today. But yeah, and a lot, of you, a lot of you guys have asked why I do not film when I have passengers on board. Uh, there's lots of reasons, but probably the main one is just for the privacy of the missionaries that we do fly. Um, I would say the majority of my flights are for missionaries, probably out of every 10 flights, probably seven of them are with passengers. Maybe only three of those legs might actually be empty. So a lot of you are very concerned that we're losing lots and lots of money flying empty around all the time, but more than, yeah, 70, at least 70 to 80% of my flights, if not more, have people on board of them. So I'm only filming on the empty ones.
Right, just a thousand feet to go. Once I get a little bit closer, it's gonna chime. Just felt something pop. <laughs> There's a big fuel drum back there, changing the pressure. You can feel it. And then when you go back down, especially if it's empty, it will like go boom, really, really loud. And uh, yeah, usually like waits until you're like just about ready to touch down. <laughs> and then it will actually have a big old pop sounding. It startles you every time though. Anyways, 200 feet before I get up to 7,000, it's gonna chime. And then I can remember either to just push it over and level off myself or just hit my autopilot. There you go. So I can hit my VS and my altitude select together. And the autopilot is just gonna level off for me. I don't have to do anything. Morsby 6622, November Tango Echo request. November Tango Echo requesting area Q&H. November Tango Echo, area 1008. thank you. All right, we'll go 1008 so that we have accurate numbers for our climb. Set up our secondary 1008, even though it's a nice, perfect day, and bring our torque back to 1,250 foot-pound of torque. I'm just giving it a little bit of left rudder pressure, so I'm going to take out some of that right right now as well, because I had it in for the climb and I had a higher power setting. Now I don't need that, so I'm going to take some of that right rudder pressure out that I had for takeoff. All right, so here's the airstrip chart. Uh, the elevation is 1,400 feet, but the touchdown zone is 1,300 feet down here in the corner. The length 600, 600 meters, it's a 10% slope. So this particular one, the valley goes down where the airstrip is up here on the hill. So where you're turning final, you're actually closer to like 800 to 900 feet above the ground when you're turning final, even though you're only 500 feet above the touchdown zone. So it can throw you off and just, you, you're gonna, it, the tendency for myself is to want to come in low, but then I only have like a 300 foot descent angle coming in rather than a 500 to 550. So with this airplane, a 550 foot descent is just about perfect coming in. So that's what I shoot for is 500 to 600 at most. Actually, the most is what we could do is, I think, 750, um, according to SOPs. But um, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to turn final 1,800 feet, and I'm just going to mentally force myself not the one to go any lower, even though my brain is telling me this doesn't look right. So other than that, it's a 10% slope. We're going to match the slope before we flare. I've shared in a couple other videos, or maybe one other video, the technique that we use to land on these slope hill runways. Um, when you come in, you actually match the slope with your power settings and everything. So let's say you want to land in 60 meters in at the first cone. Well, typically you would, you basically point to about a plane and a half before you want to touch down. If you're right on your speed, so that when you flare and reduce power, that's the amount of distance that it's going to take. But because we're on a, a hill runway now, we actually have to bring that spot back because you're basically coming in, leveling off, then reducing power and flaring at the same time. So I'm going to have to bring that spot back probably at least another plane and a half further back from the point that I would normally go so that by the time I actually can touch down, it's actually where I want it to. a lot of people have left comments like it doesn't look like you're really flaring the airplane well this isn't like an airliner where the wheels and everything just the way the wheels are the, the main gear are quite far forward so when you're flaring like you're not going to have a huge flare because your wheels are so far forward it doesn't take a lot to have like this so you're thinking that it's going to be like a little like i don't know what you're thinking but anyways yeah even though I'm flaring, it, it's, it, the nose isn't going to be like three feet off the ground. It's going to be a little bit off the ground, not very much. And when you have a slope runway, you really don't even see the flare very much because it's so quick. It's just in there, you know? So anyways, yeah, I know a lot of you are concerned that I'm not flaring the airplane and I'm just pancaking it on or something. I don't know. But we could not have asked for better weather this morning coming out here to Lele. There's actually more clouds than I actually thought. I looked on uh, our Windy app, 
and it didn't show anything out here. So just to have some clouds, I'm actually kind of amazed that they are here, but it's a great day out. We've got a volcano here, another one, probably another 15 miles or uh, probably another 25 miles out that way, which uh, erupted not last year, but the year before 2018, it erupted huge. messed up all of our flying here for a few weeks until all the ash cloud had dissipated and gone out over the ocean. All right, just because of the way the clouds are, there's a gap right here. I'm actually going to start my descent a little bit sooner than what I was originally planning. Vertical track. Oh, never mind. There we go. Right timing anyways. So we're going to go 800 feet on the descent. As our speed's starting to want to increase, we're also going to get in our left rudder because now there's not as much P factors happening on the plane, so it's going to want to actually have it a little bit off the other way. Our altitude select here down to 2,300, so that we're just 1,000 foot over our touchdown zone. Let me go ahead and start up our checklist. I've been having my fuel off for a while to even the tanks out, so let's get that back on. Check our brakes. We can turn our taws off here in a moment, but I still have my autopilot on, so I'm gonna leave it on for now, in case I put my head down and it's turned off. Yeah, it probably wouldn't end very well. All right, 6,500 pounds. Oh, it's still closer to the 66, so we're gonna keep our VREF, our approach speed, at 71 knots. Our lights in our inlet, we'll do inlet here in a minute once we get a little bit slower, below 140 knots. The reason 140 knots is because if you're doing it at 160 or 170 knots, we actually bent some of the actuator rods in there a few years ago by doing that. So that's why we don't do it anymore. Our abort on this runway is a left-hand turn out. I actually, let's see, what is this month? It is October now. I'm actually due for a go-around. I think I'm going to do a go-around on this one for practice. Every single month we have to do at least one, and I have not done one yet this month. So this will be a great opportunity to do a quick practice go-around. What we're going to do is power up. I'm just watching the white needle come up. I don't want to just, you can't just do like a piston where you just give it full power. You'll just over torque, over temp, and just mess up your engine. So we're going to power up, pitch for 73, left hand turn out. And then I'm going to reset this to 740 on the ITT. That's going to give me the best climb performance to get out of there. We're going to do a left hand turn out, re enter into the pattern, and then come back in. So that's what we're going to do. I plan to go around. All right, autopilot's off, our TAWS is enabled, our correction inhibited. All stations of the Lele, 127 decimal one, Kodiak November, Tango Echo. 900 miles to the west, passing 5,000 on descent, circuit time, Lele 36. We hit our OBS button. Turn our OBS to runway 20. And then turn our little bug 90 degrees so we know when we are perpendicular, when we're parallel. That's why I turn my OBS on so I know when I'm parallel with the runway at all times. All right, prop and harness we'll do here shortly. Actually, I'll do harness now. And we will call to let them know I'm in the circuit here in a second. I can cancel SAR actually once I'm in the circuit because we do have people here on ground that um, have a way to communicate if I were to have an accident or something, they could call and communicate that to somebody else. Five miles out, starting to reduce my power. Under probably 450 foot-pound of torque, push my prop forward. Mark that one off. Once we get down below 140, we'll do our inlet. I've already got my landing lights on. Wars V6622, November, Tango, Echo, end the circuit, Lele, cancel SAR. Wars V6622, November, Tango, Echo, end the circuit, Lele, cancel SAR. 
November Tango Echo. All stations, Lele 127 decimal 1, November Tango Echo is in the circuit, Lele. Alright, SAR is done, bypass is done, all we have is flaps to go. Do first degrees of flaps under 138 knots. We'll just fly over top of the field, that way I can take a look at it. Let them know that I'm here. Um, they can run down the airstrip and chew off any dogs or pigs or kids or whatever else is on the runway. It gives me an opportunity also to see if I can see the windsock and see if it actually is indicating anything, even though 99% of windsocks and PNG are completely worthless on the airstrip. And the reason being is because vegetation grows up around them or they're just not placed in the right way or the winds just don't hit them or yeah wind socks are not very helpful for us All right there's our pattern altitude of 2300 500 i'll we'll slow down to around 100 knots at this point with our 10 degrees of flaps all right looks good it looks dry wind sock is showing nothing I'm going to try to touch down where there's like a little walking path across the runway, about 60 meters in or so far. But this time we're going to go around first, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73, left hand turn, reset torque 700 and correction ITT 740. Right, turning base at 2,000 feet. and 1.6 nautical miles indicated on the GPS from the runway. I got three knots of wind this way, so we might have a little bit of a tailwind. Twenty degrees of flaps. Point eighty one knots for our base. Are right, turning base now? My 1800 feet, don't want to go any lower than that before I turn my final. Flaps checklist is complete. Twenty one knots. Knots of tailwind. Six knots of crosswind. Hundred feet on the descent. All right, that's a good point to go around. Five hundred. Power up. Twenty degrees of collapse. Left hand turn out. We're at seventy-four knots. Bring our ITT up to seven hundred forty. Lots of right rudder pressure, even though we're in a left turn. And keeping our speed slower so we can get up back up to 1800 feet before we turn our final again all right there we go we're gonna basically just do kind of a teardrop and come right back around all right we're at 1900 feet now bring our torque all the way back what we do in the pattern I turn at this little river right here and slow on back down to 81 knots so that when we turn our final, we're not whipping in already. We're gonna be turning 1800. 85 knots, reduce the power a little bit, pitch up a bit. We're pitching for our airspeed power for altitude. Oops, just got a sinker. All right, we have flaps to go. Flaps now, checklist is complete again. At 71 knots. Okay. 
There's our 71 knots. A little shallow on the descent. Match the slope before I flare. 500. Five knots tailwind. 